Hello and welcome to the Nintendo Network, and last time we talked about Smash Ultimate, I left you with a bit of a tease of what to come. Well, here it is, Classic Mode and Ultimate. And it is great. Each fighter has different fights, and they have all different contexts, and each is so unique. And oh man, I'm fighting Master Hand and Crazy Hand. That seems out of context for what the rest of this Classic Mode run is, but okay. But here is the problem. Master Hand and Crazy Hand show up again and again and again and again until you have fought him like 30 times. And some of the time it makes no sense why you're fighting Master Hand as the final boss of Classic Mode when so many others are catered and made so perfect. Mega Man, for example, fights the Robot Masters, characters who have traits like Masters. Then, in the final battle, you fight Dr. Mario, who's supposed to be Dr. Wily, and he's easy. Then, Mewtwo comes in, harkening back to Mega Man 2, and Wily tried to fool Mega Man into thinking he was a shape-shifting alien. It was so beautiful, and was perfect. Understanding why these are the character scenarios is what makes them even more fun and special. But then I go through and battle Master Hand and Crazy Hand again, and the context is head-scratching. Yes, I know Master Hand has been the final boss of Classic Mode since the original Smash, but it seems some characters get a royal treatment and others get, well, kind of royally screwed. It really bothers me, to the point I might be doing one of the stupidest things I could be doing, and that is saying something if you've been a part of my channel for a while. I plan on going through every fighter in Smash Ultimate, looking at their Classic Mode, and seeing if the final boss truly matches what they're going for or not and I'll be explaining what each scenario represents in context to that fighter. I will also be giving suggestions on what I would change to help the situation if I think it's just Master Hand because they couldn't think of anything. And the changes will be within reason, not like adding 20 more bosses to the game, which they could have done, but I digress. And as a warning, there'll be spoilers to the classic modes and even the games they're involved with. So let's jump right in with Mario. Mario's Let's A Go is about fighting fighters from different worlds, so like one battle is Bowser Jr. and all the Koopalines and you have to fight them all off. Just Mario being Mario. The final battle is Bowser, who will transform into Giga Bowser. Perfect, a great way to start this list here. Donkey Kong's Journey to New Donk City progression is pretty clever. Each stage is a progression of him traveling, starting in the jungle, making his way to New Donk City. After the first stage, you get a helper in the form of Diddy Kong. The final boss is Master Hand and Crazy at a higher intensity. I don't see how that really relates honestly, and I would have saved a battle against Mario and Luigi for the showdown, maybe give them super munchrooms once they have half health or something, upping the challenge a little bit. Link's A Quest to Seal Darkness is about fighting evil characters and even fighting a group of Dark Link costumes at one point. The final battle is against Ganondorf who transforms into Ganon. Perfect, no way I can complain about this one honestly. Samus's Another Planet, Another Bounty is all about taking out monstrous type fighters. The final boss is Master Hand. Okay, I guess Master Hand is a monster in a way, but Master Core would have made more sense. But since Master Core is not in the game, I'd say have a battle where Mother Brain is summoned at the beginning, and you have to fight off Ridley, then Ridley in the Meta Ridley costume, and then finish off with Dark Samus while Mother Brain is still attacking you. Or have all three of them trying to battle you while you have to take out Mother Brain's health bar. Dark Samus's The Great Poison Given Form is about Dark Samus fighting protagonists while teaming up with their evil counterparts, as it is one itself. Great idea. Master Hand Final Boss. Uh, the obvious final battle should be having to fight a tough Samus, and then she sheds her armor for a Zero Shoot Samus fight. Or have all the antagonists it was fighting with turn against her in an evil free-for-all, and the sole winner, Dark Samus, stands victorious. Yoshi's Jurassic Journey takes Yoshi to Isla Nublar to, oh wait, sorry. Yoshi fights reptilian-like fighters, culminating in a battle against Rathalos. It's stretching a little bit, but I think it fits well into the narrative of the story for Yoshi's. Kirby's Gourmet Clash refers to the Gourmet Race, and in each battle, Kirby and his hungry opponent start with 30 damage and food spawns more often. He fights King Dedede in the second to last battle in the Fountain of Dreams, perfect, and Marks is his final opponent. All right, loving this one. Fox's Spaceborn Smash focuses on fighters from space. His penultimate fight is Wolf on Venom, referencing his battle in Star Fox 64. The final battle is again the hands. This actually sort of works if they would add the Andros assist trophy in the background and slow down the hands a bit to make it more fair. It'd be like you're fighting Andros. Man, they were so close with this one. Pikachu's I Choose You, fighting all Pokemon. Yeah, that makes sense. The final battle is against Mewtwo, and then once he's down, Master Hand appears. 
I don't really get Master Hand. It would have been cooler if Mewtwo grew in size and went metal, referencing his metal armor from Pokemon the first movie. Or, better yet, start with the armor, then shed it at like, the halfway HP point and give Mewtwo amped up attacks because he's no longer restricted. Not everything has to be a giant boss battle, does it? Luigi's, Luigi's Mansion, he faces off against scary opponents, nodding to the Luigi's Mansion series, and his final boss is Dracula. Actually, yeah, I love how this takes some wiggle room with Luigi's Mansion and makes it just work for it. Dracula is a perfect final boss for him. Ness's, home to Annette, is interesting. You start Magic Camp, making your way back to Annette. This references Earthbound and how the game doesn't end when you save the world, but when you return home. The problem there is Master Hand again. It referencing the end of a journey makes it hard to choose a final boss. Actually, scratch that. Maybe it works more than I thought it would. Earthbound has some very odd enemies, and really a giant floating hand is pretty odd. So, I have to give this one a pass, as it kind of fits. Captain Falcons, up close and personal, is all about fighters who are close range opponents. The final battle is Bowser digivolving into Giga Bowser. Which, yes, Giga Bowser is a close range fighter like his rookie form, so I like it and think it works out pretty well. Jigglypuff's all original, all 64, has her fighting all fighters from the original Smash 64, her first game in the series. The penultimate battle is a free for all against Captain Falcon, Luigi, and Ness, with the final battle being a giant Donkey Kong, which is a reference to how classic mode in the first game always had a giant fight. Perfect use of nostalgia and clever at the same time. Peaches, no damsel in distress, is about fighting would-be kidnappers like Ganondorf and Bowser. The final battle is against Master Han. There's absolutely no reason this final battle is not Bowser Giga Bowser. Seriously, come on. Daisy, Sarasa Lands represents, has you battle princesses in the game with a final battle of Master Han. Why is the final battle not some form of Peach? Unless this is some weird, subtle way to confirm that Master Han is a princess, because if so, I'm okay with that. But as is, a Peach battle to finish it off would have been more appropriate. Bowser's, the red one, every red one, has Bowser fighting only red opponents, obviously referring to his hatred of Mario and his signature color. The final battle is Mario, who becomes Metal Mario, and it's another perfect classic scenario. Ice Climbers, Duos for Days, has the duo fighting off against other famous duos. One rather important duo being omitted. The final battle is Master Hand and Crazy Hand, and I hate to admit it, this one works perfect. It makes sense, and I totally approve. Sheik's Masquerade has Sheik facing off against other fighters who wear masks. The final battle is Master Hand. Another tough one to figure out a final battle for, but it could have been a battle of the friends of the fighters Sheik had just defeated looking for revenge, like Kirby for Meta Knight, or Zero Suit Samus for Samus, and so forth. Not a grand battle against a boss, but it would be a fun gauntlet and unique. Zelda's Wisdom Prevails has her fighting all villains. The final battle is Ganondorf, who turns into Ganon. Can't complain here. Side note, the added detail that only Ganon's tail can be damaged, much like an Ocarina of Time, just makes me smile. Dr. Mario's colorful treatment plan has the good doctor fighting trios that represent the three viruses in his games, Fever, Chill, and Weird. The penultimate battle is against a trio of Wario's, and the final battle is Master Hand. The Wario trio should have been the final battle, as Wario was a villain in Dr. Mario 64. Would have been a better nod to the fans of the games. Pichu's lightweight fracas has the little Pokemon fighting lightweight fighters in sky-based levels. Not sure why sky-based other than they are lightweight, but sure, fine, whatever. The final battle is Master Hand. It seems like maybe having Pichu face a gauntlet of Pokemon one after another might have fit better, showing why being a lightweight is not always a hindrance. Or fighting a giant Pikachu. Both work better than Master Hand. Falco's Soar Above the Darkness has him facing off against dark fighters like Dark Pit, Dark Samus, and such. This most likely refers to his troubled past and being a mercenary and all. His final battle is Crazy Hand, perhaps because he's the maverick of Team Star Fox? Not sure. I would have had the final battle be either against Wolf or more appropriately fighting Fox in a stage morph battle going from different Star Fox stages, representing the duo's friendly rivalry that has escalated, hence why Falco has left the team a few times. Think Leonardo and Raphael from Ninja Turtles, that sort of archetype relationship. Marts, a kingdom of dragons, has him fighting dragon-like fighters, Ridley, Corrin as examples, referring to his game where he fights the dragon Medius. I probably mispronounced that. His final battle is Rathalos, a fitting final battle for the original lore. Lucina's A Path of Heroes has her fighting different Fire Emblem challengers. Her final match is Master Hand. Why not have her fighting Krom in an epic father-daughter sparring match with no items or final smashes, with Krom buffed up? 
Heck, recycle Mars and have her face the dragon Rathalos, and it represents Grima, the fell dragon from Fire Emblem Awakening. Young Lynx, Hyrule Smash, has him fighting against opponents from the Legend of Zelda series. The final battle is Ganondorf and fits pretty well within context. Ganondorf's Encroaching Darkness has him facing off against the protagonist in many series represented in Smash. The final battle is Master Hand. Why is the final battle not Link and Zelda? Or a gauntlet of all the Zelda heroes fighting Ganondorf? Let's get a little crazy and maybe give you the ability to play as Ganon for a short period of time with very basic controls. I don't know. Mewtwo's Psychic Control refers to his type of Pokemon and his ability to control others like in Pokemon the first movie. So he always has a teammate, mostly fighters who have been under mind control in their own games. The final battle is Mewtwo and Pikachu facing the hand duo. I feel like this isn't a great final battle, but really at the same time, it seems fine. Mewtwo facing down an impressive power like Giovanni represented by Master Hand. Am I thinking too deep into this? I'm thinking too deep into this. Roy's A Journey of Swords is about him fighting sword users. So obviously his final battle is Master Hand because a hand can hold a sword? I feel like as I get deeper into this, I'm going to get more cynical. Anyways, Ganon has two swords. Why not Ganon? It would have made more sense. Krom's Fight as One starts out with fighting Lucina in Arena Ferox, like in Awakening, and then teaming up with Robin and her back and forth between battles. The final battle is Master Hand with Robin as a teammate. I honestly would have, and spoilers for Awakening, have the final battle be a possessed buff Robin like at the end of the game, teaming up with Lucina to free him or her. Have Robin's tomes and sores never deplete as an added challenge to make it more boss-like. Mr. Game & Watch's A Long Legacy is all about finding classic characters on retro stages. The final battle is Master Hand, which honestly for the scenario sort of works. Master Hand is almost 20 years old and the oldest unique thing from the Smash series. So yeah, I will allow it, even though I don't think that was the intention. Meta Knight's Two Sides of the Same Coin refers to him being both an antagonist and a hero, so he fights dark counterparts like Dark Samus. His penultimate battle is against two Meta Knights with the Galactic Knight costume and the Dark Meta Knight costume, ending with Master and Crazy Hand. I feel a bit torn here, but the two sides sort of fit with Master and Crazy, so it, it works well enough. Pitts, fighting for the goddess, has him facing fighters that have similarities to characters in his own game, like Ganondorf as Magnus, because of the sword. The final battle is Pit and Dark Pit facing Master and Crazy Hand. This actually works because of the final battle against Hades and Uprising. There's no assist trophy of him like Andros, but the thought is there and I really like it. Wow, three in a row where I like Master Hand. Dark Pit's Created Warriors has the mirrored image of Pit facing off against warriors created but not born, like Dark Samus, Mewtwo, and Cloud? Is that a big plot point in Final Fantasy VII? I haven't played it, so I don't really know. At least I warned about spoilers. The final battle is him and Pit facing off against Gallium, another Created Warrior. Works well. Zero Suit Samus's Grapplers, Whips, and Claws has her facing opponent to use those items, like Simon, Samus, and Lynx. The final battle is Master Hand. Two options honestly to fix this. First, Gallium as he does attempt to grab you at one point, so that's a grapple. The better option is facing a big Ridley that uses his side beef move a lot, grabbing Samus and tossing her. Make it a hard brutal battle for redemption for Samus against the one who killed her parents. Wario's I'm a gonna win has him facing opponents who use brute force, like K. Rowan and Sinuar. His final battle is Master Hand. I guess that works, but wouldn't Giga Bowser be a better representation of Brute Force and parallels him and Mario a bit better? Snakes, Weapons and Equipment OSP, explosive and gun type weapons spawn like crazy and all of his opponents are weapon users, like Inklings. The penultimate battle is against another snake referencing Liquid Snake, his clone twin. The final battle is Gallium, which is a reference to the Metal Gears themselves in his game. A lot of fun nods and throwbacks. I like it. Ike's The Black Clad Warriors is all about facing opponents wearing black costumes, referring to his fight and struggles against the Black Knight in his games. The final battle is Master Hand. Why not Dracula? He wears black, at least it goes with the scenario of wearing black. Pokemon Trainers, the future champion, is about the trainer wanting to win the Pokemon League. The penultimate battle is battling the opposing gender trainer. The final battle is Mewtwo and then Master Hand. I would have made the penultimate the final battle, given the three opposing Pokemon life bars that you have to take out. It would have felt a lot more like a Pokemon battle. Diddy Kong's Hey Little Buddy has Diddy Kong taken on little buddies of different series, like Bowser Jr. The final battle is Master and Crazy Hand. Why is it not K. Rule? And even give you a Diddy Kong with the Dixie Kong outfit as a teammate to help take on a larger K. Rule enemy. That would have been such a better final battle. 
Lucas's Magic, Sacred Powers, and PSI has the little psychic facing off against other psychic opponents. The penultimate battle is Mewtwo, a reference to Gigas, an antagonist from the Mother series that Mewtwo has some semblance to. Then final battle is Master Hand. This one is easy. Make the penultimate the final battle with a health bar. They're really close here. Sonic's, at the speed of sound, has Sonic facing off against fighters that could parallel characters from his own games, like a giant metal Sonic is Chaos, or three Kirbys, red, blue, and yellow, on the halberd while Sonic Heroes is playing. But with all the nice touches, the final boss is still just Master and Crazy. I mean, I'm sure there's been a pair of metal arms Eggman has used to fight Sonic in the past, but it seems like a cheap ending. Maybe have Dr. Mario, as Eggman, spawn dozens of low stamina Mega Man and Rob's Bad Nicks as you attempt to whittle down his own HP bar. King Dedede's Royal Rumble has him facing off against any character of royalty. The final battle is Master Hand. <sighs> Why is it not Ganondorf Ganon, you know, now that he's in his Ocarina of Time look and you know when he was called the Great King of Evil? Olimar's Planetary Explorer has him facing off against other fighters who travel in space. The final battle is Master Hand. This works well enough. Really, Giga Bowser or Ganon could have worked as a large unknown creature you have to take down like in Pikmin, but Master of Hand is an oversized boss and it fits well enough within the Pikmin scenario. Lucario's Counter Encounters, which is all about fighting fighters who use counters. I don't know why that name makes me smile. The final battle is Master and Crazy. That takes my smile away. The penultimate battle is against Greninja. The final battle should have been Greninja while he just counters constantly and you have to work hard to find an opening to take him down. More of a strategy game than fighting and would harken back to Pokemon games itself a bit. Rob's unreadable expressions are all fighters who wear masks or don't have any expressions, like Wii Fit Trainer, so fighters who can stare right into your soul. The penultimate battle is a trio of Rob's referring to the Rob Squad from subspace, and the final battle is Gallium, again from subspace. Oh, thank you, we got this one right! Toon Links, the teamwork of Courage, has you teaming up with two other Toon Links referring to Triforce Heroes. The final battle is against Ganon. Another perfect one. Seriously, I had so much fun with this scenario. It was clever and really enjoyable. Wolf's reunited roster are all fighters who have been in previous games, but not in Smash for Wii U, much like Wolf. The final battle is Gallium, again, who was in Brawl, but not Smash 4. We just got three in a row that were just perfect the way they are. I hope this trend continues. Villager's Mistake to Underestimate has the unlikely fighter taking on other unlikely fighters like Isabel. The final battle is Crippling Debt. No, no. That is my final battle after buying every amiibo. Villager takes on Master Hand, and I guess a floating hand can be an unsuspecting fighter. Another where I don't think it was intentional, but it sort of works out in the end. Mega Man's variable weapon system online I have talked about at the start. Fighting the Robot Masters, then Dr. Mario's Wily and Mewtwo as the alien image from Mega Man 2. This is the poster child of how all these should have been. Wii Fit Trainer's Aerobic Smash has you taken on the biggest fighters in the game to help them work out of the arena and lose a battle smash. Dr. Mario will appear as a teammate. I think he has the same credentials as Dr. Spichemin. The final battle is Master Hand. Okay, this one could have been really clever. Have Wii Fit Trainer battle Giga Bowser. Then once the HP is taken down, he becomes normal Bowser, showing weight loss, and then take Bowser out in a normal smash battle. This would have been really cool and unique. Rosalina and Luma's one star after another has her fighting space-related fighters. The penultimate battle is against Bowser, and the final battle is against Marks. Hey, that works. Kirby fights Marks in space, so I see the connection. Nicely done. Little Max, friendly sparring, has the Foxer fighting close-range fighters, and the penultimate battle is Donkey Kong, referencing his appearance in Punch-Out for Wii. The final battle is Master Hand, which boxing using hands, yeah, works decently enough. Greninja's Your Turn Greninja has you battle opponents of certain types, so like Bowser's of Fire type with all battles on Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, and then the penultimate at the Kalos Pokemon League. The final battle is Master Hand. I would have much preferred the final battle to be a six stock battle, Greninja versus six Pokemon. When one is defeated, a new one comes out. There's enough Pokemon to do this and would have been a really cool and unique final battle. Palatina's A Little Divine Intervention has her going in between battling fighters of holiness, like Zelda, and fighting fighters of darkness, like Bayonetta and Cloud. I thought Cloud was the protagonist. Man, maybe I need to play Final Fantasy VII. I digress. The final battle is Master Hand. Much like Pits, I can see how this could work with the hands representing either Hades or Medusa. I will give it a pass. 
Pac-Man's Ageless Classics has him sort of reliving all-star mode from Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, facing characters in chronological order of their appearances, and culminating in a final battle with Dracula, as he is the oldest boss character to exist in the game. It is a stretch, but no worse than some of mine, and it kinda actually works. Waga 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 waga. Robins, Thunder and Flames, has you fighting pairs of fighters that represent those elements, like Pikachu and Ken. The penultimate battle is against a Robin of the opposite gender you choose, mirroring the final battle in Awakening against Grima. The final battle classic mode is Master Hand. I would have made the final battle the penultimate one like Chrom's in a way, and give the evil Robin more power, HP bar, and unlimited tomes and swords. Shulks, witness the Monado's power, has you fighting fighters who represent one of the Monado's abilities, like Sonic is speed and Falco is jump and so forth. The penultimate battle, god have you noticed when I mention the penultimate battle I end up talking about Master Hand? Anyways it is Mega Man who is supposed to represent Metal Face. And you don't need the Monado's power to know Master Hand is the last fight. I would have just made Metal Face on Gyro Plains be the final battle. I know it wouldn't be as dynamic as the other bosses, but it could fit. Even have low HP Mega Man and Robs to appear to distract Shulk and have them represent Mechons. Bowser Jr.'s Mama Peach Where Are You has you faced off against princesses in search for Peach, who Bowser Jr. thought was his mother in Super Mario Sunshine. The penultimate battle is Peach and Mario. And look, you know who the final boss is, so let's just make it Mario and Peach as the final battle would have been much better. Heck, even add Bowser into it. A large Bowser, who bays in green jello. Mario Sunshine was weird. Duck Hunt's Dog Duck Zapper has you fighting animal fighters or Miis in animal costumes. The final battle is Rathalos, an animal boss. Yes, it's about time I liked one. Okay, it's been like three, but it really feels a lot longer than that. Ryu Seeking Challenge has you fighting fighters and stamina battles on Omega stages, and each fighter representing the Street Fighter, uh, fighter. So Donkey Kong is Blanca and Little Mac is Balrog. The final battle is Master and Crazy Hand, but as I did research for this, one of their moves is much like M. Bison's Psycho Crusher, and Bison's theme is playing in the background. So they did think this through, and this actually really works. Ken's Red Hot Rivalry has him fighting rivals of main characters, as he is a rival to Ryu. Ryu is the penultimate battle, with just Crazy Hand as the final. This is an easy one. Ryu as the final battle, no items, final destination, blah blah blah. Come on, this is basically gift wrap for them. Clouds, a ride, not interested, has you fighting on motion-like levels, so spirit tracks. It is also a reference to Cloud's motion sickness. The final battle is Master Hand, which works well as a final boss, since Sephiroth is a boss for a cloud, and he only has one wing. It sorta of works. And as little effort Square did to give Nintendo anything from the series to help in this game, this is a pretty decent nod. Corrin's Between Black and White refers to the character's struggle between her birth family and the family that raised her. Her opponents will alternate between black and white costumes referring to the two nations Corrin is wanting to unite. The final bout is Master Hand. Okay, so my suggestion is a bit of an odd one and might be too difficult, but it could have been Master Hand and Crazy Hand, one in a darker glove than the other, going with the black and white theme. The hands can do crazy damage to everyone, including each other as they actually fight, and Corrin must defeat both of them to submit them into hearing and helping unite the two nations in the game. Yeah, that might be a bit much, but if they keep throwing master hands at me, I'm just gonna keep trying to make it work in context. Bayonetta's The Requiem of Fallen Wings refer to her battling angels. All of her opponents have wings, and the final battle is a big Politana. Wow, that works out so freaking well, and so simple. I don't have to talk about Bayonetta for a long time. Inklings, a incredible journey, has you fighting opponents whose colors match the stage, like a blue Yoshi on Summit. The final battle is Marks, who has rainbow wings, so it fits well within the scenario. Ridley's, it can't be, Space Pirates, has you fighting characters who pilot spaceships. The final battle is Master Hand. Why is this not a final conflict against Samus? How is this not a final conflict against Samus? Make Ridley big to make it more ridiculous. One-sided, sure, but come on. Simon's Smashvania has you fighting creature type fighters and the final boss of Dracula, an obvious one, and done well. Richter's Smash Echoes has you fighting nothing but Echo fighters amusingly enough. The final battle is Dracula. It doesn't fit 100% in the scenario, but it works enough. Ironically, Crazy Hand, who is sort of a Echo of Master Hand, would have been perfect. King K. Rules, super heavyweight class, has you fighting the biggest fighters in the game. It is also a reference to the final battle in Donkey Kong 64. The final battle is Gallium. 
works fine for a big heavy boss. Isabelle's Best in Show has you facing off against nothing but female fighters, but the last battle is of course Master Hand. So yeah, Master Hand has an obvious male voice. The only way around this would be to have Isabelle face the male counterparts of the female she just faced, so Link for Zelda and so forth. The female counterparts jumps in and helps you, so once you defeat Link, Zelda disappears and Peach appears to help out with Mario. Odd, yes, convoluted, yes, but still works better than Master Hand. In Senior Burning Pro Wrestling Spirits refers to him being the heel Pokemon as a wrestler. You face fighters who use wrestling moves like Bowser and King K. Roll, and all battles are on the boxing ring. The final battle is Master and K's at hand. Yeah, the final battle should have been against either Little Mac or Ken, per the reveal trailer. Would have been a cool little nod. And we are done. My lord, this was a bit more than I thought it was going to be, but it was still fun. Look, I still love Classic Mode, and it's miles above Smash for Wii U's Classic Mode. It is still bursting with character and unique battles and never felt repetitive beyond Master Hand, and even then it wasn't too bad. I just saw how perfect some were and, well, as you know, the waste of potential. I hope you all learned a bit of these characters and why the classic modes were unique to each of them. Thank you for joining me here at the Nintendo Network. Which was your favorite classic mode run? Obviously, Mega Man was mine. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this page, make sure to like and subscribe to us right here on YouTube. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I need a break from Smash after this. Well, after I check the shop and the spirit board and play a few rounds and do some more World of Light.